God glory and praise for his word on this morning. And so, beloved, as we, as we, as we seek God in this word on today, we seek God in this word on today, I want to preface the word by, by allowing for a little context that might help us to better discern uh, the, the passion, uh, the desire, uh, the, the, the thirst, the hunger you, uh, that is expressed by the psalmist you, uh, in this particular part of the text. Uh, I, 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 want you, I, want to, I want to inform you, I want to let you know from, from the onset, uh, as, as, as we begin in this psalm, it, it, is, it is particularly interesting here, I'm interested here, in the fact that more often than not, when we are reading the psalms, there is, there is a tendency to attribute the psalms to Brother David. Uh, in this psalm in particular, however, we see that the psalm here has been attributed to the sons of Korah. The sons of Korah. I, I, I want, I want you to, help, to help you to identify who the sons of Korah are. In the scripture, in Numbers chapter 26, we, there is an account of a rebellion when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, mm -hmm. in the book of Exodus. Uh, it tells us, it tells us that, that during the rebellion, there was a group, there was a group of, of leaders who came up against Moses, mm -hmm. who defied Moses, and in doing so, defied the will of God. And the scripture says that this group was led by a group, by one person who belonged to a group of people called the Koharatites, uh, and they were Levites. They took care of the service in the temple. They took care of the worship in the temple. They took care of the praise in the temple. The head of this particular sect, his name was Korah. Mm -hmm. So the scripture tells us in Numbers 26 that that it was Korah who led a group of 250 other leaders to oppose Moses. Uh, but, the, but the Bible says that the Lord put down the opposition as he had the whole congregation come before him. And the Bible says that he opened up, that the mouth of the earth opened up, and they were swallowed up into the earth. And all 250 that were a part of the opposition were swallowed up in the earth. And the Bible said the leader of this opposition was Korah. And, that, and at the conclusion of this, uh, he said there, there were thousands, there were thousands that, that died at that time. But the Bible tells us that even though there was a matter that involved Korah, Korah's children were allowed to live. Amen that the matter did not extend to the children of Korah. And so, and so it's the children of Korah who remain, who continue in their service unto the temple. And so, beloved, as we deal with this text on today, the Bible says here that this was, this was, this song was offered up and attributed to those sons of Korah. See, beloved, sometimes, Sometimes for us to get the full picture, sometimes for us to get an understanding of, of what someone else is going through, to get, to get some idea of what they see and how they see. Sometimes if we want to understand their passion and the way that they believe about things and why is it that they feel a certain way and I don't feel that same way. Beloved, you, you might not have the same story that they have because I can imagine that as this story was told to the descendants of Korah, for those who remain, for those who survived, for those who still had the opportunity and the privilege of serving God and maintaining the service of God in the house of God, for those who still had the opportunity to praise God and to worship God and then find themselves as they are here in a situation where they have been exiled from their land. And even as they have been exiled from their land, they've been exiled also from the house of God. And so in the house where they went in every day and offered up the service of God, 
in the house where they offered up a praise unto God. They find themselves now in a season where not only have they been exiled from their land, but they have been exiled from their God and exiled from the place which they associate with God's presence. Yes. Uh, and so, beloved, uh, so beloved, if, if you understand this, then maybe you can understand a little better when he begins the song this way. He begins it this way. He says, now, as the heart panteth, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> as the heart, oh. as the deer panteth yes. after the waterfalls, yes. after the water brooks, he said, so panthers I after ye, O God. Jesus. He said, now, now, now that I'm apart from my God, I, I long to be with my God. I, I long to be, to be back in a place where I can continue to worship my God. I long to be in a place where I can go back into the, into the temple of God. It, it's, it's Brother David, it's Brother David that, 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 that gives us some idea of this passion and, and this, this longing. Brother David declares in Scripture, David says, One thing, one thing, one thing, one thing I desire of the Lord, and that one thing will I seek after, and that is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the Jesus. days of my life. He said, because it is there where I may behold in his beauty. It is there where I may inquire in his temple. The psalmist declares here, he said, I long for that day. My soul is thirsty for God. Yes, God. <laughs> My soul yes, God. is thirsty for God. My soul longs to be back in the presence of God. He says, when, 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 when shall I come and appear before God once again? My soul is thirsty. My soul is thirsty. He, he says, I don't want to be apart from God anymore. Uh, but I am apart from God even in this season due to circumstances beyond my control. And, and I, I can't go into the house because, because others have affected my ability to do so. I can't go into the house of God and praise God like I used to due to circumstances beyond my control. And watch, watch what he says as he goes on to verse number three. Watch, he said, he says, so, so my tears have become my meat day and night. My, my tears. He said, he said, I, I, I've lost, I've lost an appetite for everything else, and, and as I've lost an appetite for food, he said, my tears have become my food. My tears have become my meat day and night, as I long for. The ability to be once again in the presence of my God. And he says here, he said, and it's made even worse because I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by people in this land, in this place of isolation. I'm surrounded by people who don't have the same experience that I have. I'm, I'm surrounded by people who don't have the same passion and thirst after God. My, my passion it's, it's even worse because they don't understand my thirsting for God and it's even worse because even though they don't understand it they take advantage of the opportunity to mock me Jesus, Jesus. He said so so they say to me continually where where is your God yeah. where art thou God See, beloved this, this is uh, this 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 passage of scripture uh, sounds all too familiar as the people of God now find themselves in a season where due to circumstances beyond our control, we, we do not have the ability, the ability to gather ourselves in the house of God. And for those who have associated the house with the presence of God, then you're even in an even more terrible situation having not come to the understanding that wherever you are, uh -huh. if you have the living God living on the inside, of you. But in this particular situation, he said, so the people who don't understand, they begin to mock. And, and so, beloved, there are people all over the world today that they're asking, where is, where is, where, where is your God? Where is your God? They don't question if there is a God, but they're questioning his apparent forsaking of his people but 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 they just don't know they they don't know my God the way that I know God but beloved it's in these moments that we have to be careful 
We have to be careful because after, after a while, after day, after day, after day, of those who don't understand our God continually, continually speaking to us and, and mocking and asking, where is your God? If, 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 what, how can you continue to, to worship this God where, who has left you in your time of greatest need? How can you continue to lift up this God who has apparently forsaken you when it appears to me that you need him the most? If you can't count on this God, when you need him, when you really need him, how, how is it that you can continue to praise this God? Beloved, that's why, that's why most especially in moments such as these, you need to surround yourself with like-minded people. You, you need to break away from the naysayers. You, you need to break away from those people who don't understand that. That I don't have to see my God to know that he's there. You need to break away from those people who don't understand that faith is the substance of the things that I hope for. It's the evidence of the things that are not seen. Beloved, surrounding yourself with people now who don't understand, who even take the opportunity to pose questions and present questions to you to corrupt your thinking. Beloved, that is of no benefit to us particularly in a season like this. So sometimes it's necessary for us to break away and not just break away, but, but as we have even invited this talk into the place of our understanding, beloved, it might be necessary right now just for you to do a check yourself to, to make sure that they have not been able to Amen. corrupt your thinking. See, 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 so watch what he says. He says, so he says, so when I think of these things, mm -hmm. when I think of these things, he says, I pour out my soul within me. Mm -hmm. When I think of these things, he says, Well, so what, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about what, what's being said around me. But uh, and, and as I think about those things, I'm reminiscing at the same time about, about the things that I were were able to do. He says, he says, I remember that I went, I went with the multitude. He said, I went with the multitude and and and, and I went with them into the house of God. And, and as we went into the house of God Sunday after Sunday, he said, as we went into the house of God, we were able to, we were able to with one voice offer up a a song of praise. When we went into the house of God, we were able to offer up with one voice a joy and a praise for God. When we went into the house of God, we were able to praise God and, 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 and to come together corporately so that we could with one voice let God know just how much we appreciate him. Just uh, to let God know that that, 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 that we appreciate everything that he's done and uh, to let God know that, that we, so, we are submitted to that which he has for our lives and, 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 and that we're going to trust him and, and having begun this journey with him, we're, we're, we're not going to let go and Amen. even when times get tough, we're yes. not going to let go. It, it, it was a welcome reprieve Sunday yes, after Sunday when yes. we came together corporately and offered up a praise unto God. See, see, we weren't just coming together to have church. No, Amen. some people come into the house of God just to check off the box every Sunday, but I Bless came into Lord. the house and I came in with a multitude. Yes. I came in with a group of people who were of like mind, who all had an experience with God, and we took advantage of the opportunity from Sunday to Sunday to offer up one voice of joy and praise unto the Lord. We were the people Amen. who kept the holy day. Yes. Yeah, 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 Bless yeah. And, and, and so when, when I'm reminded of this, he says, I pour out my soul Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. in me. I pour out my soul in me. Let, let, let me remind you, beloved, that the place of the soul, the soul is the place of the mind. It, it is here in the soul that, that all the decisions are made. See, that's, that's why God says, I've got to be able to affect the inner man, because if I can affect the inner man, I can affect the doings of the outer man. He said, so in this place of the inner man, there is... There is my thoughts. There are my thoughts, my affections, my will. There, 
They're all there in the place of this inner man. And, and, and he says, so as I pour out my thoughts, he says, I pour out my thoughts. I'm pouring out my most intimate thoughts. Yeah, because, because now in this place of isolation, he says, I find myself in a place of deep meditation. And, and so I'm pouring out my most intimate thoughts. I'm, uh, see, 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 and, and, and this, see, there are some times, beloved, that, that require us that if we're not going to be real with anybody else, see, see, on the outside, I can... I can respond oh, to those who ask me, Lord. might ask me in this season, how 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 you doing? How Lord. how you doing in this season? And, yes. and I, I can respond, oh, I'm blessed and, and highly favored, like many of us do. But but the reality is, beloved, if I'll be honest with myself, I'm 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 a, I'm, 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 I'm feeling Glory. I'm fearing some things. I have a sense of anxiety if I'll be honest Bless with myself, you. beloved. In moments like this, this is not the time for you to keep up this facade. And this is not the time for you to have this feigned humility, this Amen. feigned bravado. No, this is the time to, to be honest with yourself. Why? Because when nobody else is encouraging you, you need to be like Brother David. You need to encourage yourself. Encourage yes. yourself. In 1 Samuel, Brother David, Brother David tells us how it's done. In 1 Samuel, the scripture says that and David was greatly distressed. And he was greatly distressed and caused because the people had began to speak about stoning him. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the people had risen up and, and began to blame David for everything that was going on. He said, and the people spake of stoning him because the people themselves, he said, their soul was grieving. Uh -huh. yeah. Was grieving. Every man was grieving for his sons and for his daughters. But the Bible said, David, David snuck away. Uh -huh. David escaped that thinking. David did not allow his mindset to be corrupted by that. The Bible said, Brother David encouraged himself in the Lord, Amen. his God. Uh -huh. See, sometimes, sometimes, beloved, in the absence of encouragement by people around you, you need to encourage yourself. Yes, God. So he declares here, he said, I poured out. I poured out my, my, my most intimate thoughts. I, I poured them out. He said, my secrets, I, I poured them out. The things that don't that nobody else knows, I poured them out. The things that keep me up at night, the worries, the anxiety, the fear, all of those things, the things that I can't let anybody else know. He said, I poured them out. But now watch this, beloved. Because we need to follow, we need to follow this strategy, this remedy, this method here. Because watch, he does not pour out of himself. Hmm. So you have to be careful about letting other people know your vulnerability. Amen. You have to be careful about Amen. the people that you let know about your most intimate thoughts. You have to be careful. You have to be careful, see, because the enemy is waiting to take advantage of you when you are able, when you now share with them some of your most intimate thoughts. You have to be careful, beloved. And so the Bible said, as he poured out, he didn't pour out without, but he poured out within. Yes, sir. And as he poured out within, he was honest with himself. And those thoughts that he revealed, they were between him and his God. Amen. And so as he poured out within, watch, 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 oh, watch what he says. He said, he, said he, he poured out his, his true thoughts. Like, like Brother David, he poured out his true thoughts. See, because, see, because some, sometimes... Sometimes in our effort to keep secrets and to keep things to ourselves and, and not be able to release them, uh, he says, and some, sometimes, sometimes that's the thing that actually stands between us and true deliverance. Why? Because in the absence of me being able to be honest with myself, I have not yet confronted those things and given God an opportunity even to deal with them. Amen. And so watch how he deals with this. And so the scripture says that as he began to pour out and to pour in to himself his most intimate secret, he said, it's at this place where he had to have a conversation mm. with self. Mm. And, 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 and so, beloved, I, I, I don't know, I don't know if, 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 if any of you listening to me have, have had this conversation with self, but, 
But I'll tell you, it might be, it might be time. Uh, uh, it, it, you might not be afraid of COVID-19, but, but COVID-19 might just offer you an opportunity to be real with self and to deal with some of those things that were even prevalent even before COVID came. Yeah. But, but because COVID has driven you into the house, into a private place, in the place of your meditation, in the place of your isolation, in wow. lieu of you making your way to the house of God, when you find yourself in this secret place, talk to yourself, beloved. Mm -hmm. And keep the conversation real, and, and, and so and, and so and so that so that we know what that looked like. Let's 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 delve into this conversation that the psalmist is having with himself. He asks he asks number one. He asks the question. He says, "Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou cast down?" And the casting down, the casting down, beloved, it means to be brought down. It means to be humble. It's, it means to be humble, but but not any kind of, of humbling. It is it is the humbling that happens when 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 there is a a sense of despair. When, oh, when I look around and I see everything is wrong, but at the same time I cannot see everything being right again. When I look around and I see everything is going in the wrong direction, and I, and as I look around, I cannot see how to correct it and get it. Back, going back in the right direction. When I look around and 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 and, and I see everything is is beyond my control, and there's nothing that I can do to put it back on track. That brings about this feeling of despair. And so he asks his soul, his inner man, why art thou cast down? Why, why, why have you lost all hope? Why? Have you lost all hope? Let me remind you. Come on. Let me remind you. Let, let me remind, remind you, you that, 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 that we serve a God. Let, let me remind you. Amen. Let me remind you of the God that we serve. Uh, because surely, mm -hmm. surely, 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 Isaiah 53 declares it like this. He says, surely, surely, I, don't lo I no longer have to deal with my grief because surely uh -huh. he has borne my grief. Uh -huh. I, deal with my helplessness because surely he has borne my grief. I no longer have to deal with my lack of power to overcome and to be healed and Lord delivered and set free because surely he has borne my grief and surely he has carried my sorrow. Surely. And so why art thou cast down, O oh my soul, if you see this thing the same way that I see it? Surely Surely someone else has carried my sorrows. He said, he said, but 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 it's all in the way that you see it, beloved. He said, because he's done all of these things. He said, yet we have esteemed him stricken and smitten of God. He said, he's done these things. He's borne your grief. He's carried your sorrow. But as we looked at the things that are accomplished, he said, there is a tendency for us to look at Christ on the cross and assigned to him this as his birth. Jesus. He was judged. Jesus. He died. And that's why the scripture has to remind us, but he was wounded for your transgression. Yes, he was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace is upon him, and with his strife yes. you oh, are healed. Yes. And so let me ask you once again, why, why, why art thou cast down Oh, my soul. Let, 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 let's examine this just a little further. And the with his stripes, with his stripes. This, this is a phrase. This is a phrase that, that means to be joined together, to be joined together, uh, to, 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 to be united with. It, it means to be bound to. It means to, to be in fellowship with. And so he says, because of my fellowship uh -huh. with Christ, he says, I am Healed. Well, 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 well let, 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 me, let me tell you why the fellowship is so important because in the fellowship there's a unity and in the healing, the healing begins this way because 
with the healing, there is a mending, there is a stitching together. Oh and in the stitching together, there is the beginning of the reparation. See, see, your healing came about because of your fellowship with Christ. Okay. It began with the fellowship with his suffering. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have fellowship with his suffering. I'm bound to his suffering. But but even in that, I have fellowship also with his death. Yeah. yeah. I have fellowship with his burial. I have fellowship with his resurrection. And now that he's raised up the one new man, I have fellowship with his power. I have fellowship with his life. I have fellowship with his victory. So remind me once again, why is it that you're cast down in the first place? Because he's done all of these things to make sure that whatever is his is yours. And so if victory belongs to him, why? Why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. Perhaps Paul put it back. Brother Paul said, says, you, you have to fight the good fight of faith. This is no time to shy away from the fight. He said, you have to fight the good fight of faith, and you have to lay hold of the eternal glory, whereunto you are also called and, and have professed this good profession before many witnesses. Why are you cast down, oh my soul? Don't you know that you're better than that? Why are you cast down, oh my soul? Don't you know all that he's done for you? Why are you cast down, oh my soul? Don't you know that it's a finished work? Why are you cast down? Don't you know that you have been bound together with him? And if he is with him, he is for you. And if he is for you, no doubt. Awesome. Can't be against you. Why are you cast down? Uh, oh my soul. Oh my soul. The, the, the second question he said, and why art thou disquieted within me? And disquieted, beloved, it is the opposite of quiet. Yeah. It says so in the disquieting, it means to cry out. And to cry out with a loud voice, to cry out. Uh, but 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 now watch it, beloved. He said, "There's a crying out." He said, "But it's an inward crying out, uh -huh. huh? Huh? In, 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 and because it's an inward crying out, he said, there's a commotion. Jesus. But the commotion is going on on the inside. There's there's a commotion. See, see, that's why it's important for us, to, beloved. That even when you find yourself." by yourself, it's important that if you don't have anybody to talk to, you you got to talk to God if you have to, but you've got to release it because if you keep crying out on the inside, it'll create a commotion on the inside, and there'll be a stirring up on the inside, and there'll be an agitating on the inside, but remember that it's in this place of my thoughts and my feelings and my will, and I don't want to be agitated in the place of my mind. I, I don't in the place of my will. I don't want to be agitated in the place of my affections because I'll never be able to make a reasonable decision. I'll always be moved by my emotion. And in the end, I'll never be in the will of God because God is a God of peace. Yes, he is. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps that's why Jesus declared it this way. Jesus knew how important it was for us to be able to have peace even in the worst of situations. Jesus, Jesus. In John 14 and 27, he declared, peace I leave you. That's what he said, yes sir. Peace I leave you. Yes sir. Yes. As an inherit you, I give unto you. He said, but, but now he said, but, but I, as I give this peace unto you, I don't give it the way that the world gives peace unto you, see? See, because the world gives you peace when the world wants you to have peace. Mm -hmm. See, because the world's peace is a conditional peace. Oh, yes, so, so when everything is going well in the world, then I can have worldly peace. Mm -hmm. when, when everything is going well around me, then I can have peace. But, but Christ said, no, I, I, I've given you a different kind of peace, see, mm -hmm. because this peace is rooted in your trusting me. Yeah. Oh, this peace is rooted in your faith in me. Yeah. This peace is rooted in your and your belief in me. Yes, this Lord. peace is rooted in your ability to surrender yourself and to submit yourself to the mighty hand of God and yes, wait on me God. to exalt you and to raise you Lord, up once Jesus. again. This peace is dependent upon your ability to, to, ability to believe. He said, he said, so so with this peace, he said, he said, if you if you believe, he said, he said. Let not your heart be 
trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't let your heart be agitated. All right. uh -huh. Don't let your heart be Don't confused. Let Amen. Don't let the commotion rise up on Amen. the inside of you in the place of your thinking. So now watch this, beloved. He didn't say, he didn't say that he would not allow for your peace. He said, he said, you have the ability to not allow anyone or anything yes, to disturb your peace. See, this Amen. is the peace Amen. that surpasses all understanding. Amen. This peace, the world can't give you this kind of peace. See, this peace is wrapped up in the joy of God. And we know that this joy that, that we have in God, the world can give it to us, and the world can't take it away. He said, you need this peace. And he said, and you have the ability to grab hold of this peace. Don't let go of your peace. He says, he says, but but even here, uh, and tell tell me, tell me once again, so why are you disquieted? Why are you disquieted within me? Within me. And, and, and then after two questions, he makes a declaration. He said, Hope thou in God. Yes. Hope thou in God. Don't hope in yourself. Amen. Hope thou in God. Don't hope in your neighbor. Hope thou in God. Don't hope in the government. No, Amen. hope thou Jesus. in God. Don't hope in the president. No, hope thou in God. Don't, don't hope in the deacons and the pastor and the usher board. No, hope thou in God. Amen. Hope in God. Now watch this, beloved, because this hope thing, this hope thing is essential is essential in our relationship with God. Because he declares now that even as my soul has found a resting place, he said it is my dependency on God Amen. and an understanding of his word mm -hmm. and an acceptance of the promises that are revealed out of that word mm -hmm. that will sustain me and allow me to go on. So now watch what this word hope means. The word hope here is koval. It actually means to wait. It means to wait. It means it means to wait, and it means to be patient. It means to wait and to be patient. Well, beloved, the only way the only way that I can wait, the only way patience can be exercised, is there has to be a faith in something bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. right. And because there is no God bigger than my God, He said I can put my hope in Him. And I put my hope in him and him alone because I know that it is he and he alone who has the ability to affect my situation. See, beloved, sometimes we put our hope in people who really don't have the power nor the resources to affect my situation. But we serve a God who can very well affect your situation if you have the faith to wait on him, to wait on him. The Bible says, the psalmist says in the, in the scripture, he says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And, 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 and encourage yourself and, and wait on the Lord and, and he will strengthen you once again in the place of your mind. Wait Jesus. on the Lord. And, 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 just for, and just for emphasis he declares once again, wait, wait, wait I say on the Lord. He said wait on the Lord. The, the, the psalmist in another place in the 130th Psalm he declares it like this. He says I wait on the Lord. Uh -huh. I wait on the Lord. I wait on the Lord. My soul does wait on the Lord. And in his word do I hope. Mm. It says, my soul waiteth on the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. Mm. Hmm. And, 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 and again, just for emphasis, he says, I said uh -huh. more than they that watch for the morning. He said, my soul is going to wait on the Lord. And, and I'm going to wait on the Lord like someone who is watching for the morning. And, uh, my soul is waiting on the Lord like, like the sentinel who has been on guard all night long and waits for the morning to come because he knows when the morning comes my my shift will be over when when the morning comes i no longer have to put myself in danger anymore when the morning comes there there is a change of shift when the morning comes that I, I, I can get some rest when the morning comes i can lay down and, and i can rest because someone else is going to be taken over and he's going to be guarding so that I can sleep and I can have a good summer because I know that there's another sin. 
fentanyl that is on cause. That's why he said, if not for, if not for, if not for the mercies of God, the enemy would have been able to affect me in the place of my mind. He would have. And he would have been able to overwhelm me. But it is by the mercies of God yeah. that I have not been consumed because he's a faithful God. Yes, he he's a long-suffering God. Yes, it's by the mercies of God that I can lay my head down with the assurance that the joy is coming in the morning. I say, and I say again, my soul waits for the Lord the, the way that a watchman watches for the morning. I say, and I say again, I will not give up hope. My soul watches and waits for the Lord the way one watches for the morning. I say, and I say again, I will not give up even in this season because my soul waited for the Lord even much more than those who watch for the morning. I will not give up my hope in God. The psalmist declares it this way. He said, he said, I, I, I would have fainted. Uh-huh. If I had not believed yes. to see the glory, the goodness of the Lord Amen. in the land of the living. Yes. In the land of the living. The, 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 beloved, beloved, there's virtue in waiting. Oh, and yes. particularly when we wait on God because, oh, yes. uh, because he reminds us, they that wait yes. upon the Lord. Come on. So they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Yes. They shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall run and not be weary. Yes. They shall walk and oh, yeah. not faint. Oh, yeah. Beloved, there's virtue in waiting yes, on the Lord. Amen. Yes, God. And, 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 then, and then he makes this final declaration to his inner man. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, now that now that I've got your back and the right mindset, he says, says, hope in God, wait on the Lord. He said, because I will yet praise him. For the help of his countenance. Yes, 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 yes. I might not be with him right now yes, physically. Yes. But I will yet praise him yes. for the help oh, of his countenance. Yes, I can't go inside the sanctuary today, but I will yet praise oh, him yes. for the help of his countenance. Yes. Yeah, they've given me some guidelines. And I'm going to follow the guidelines because buck the system, uh -huh. but but I have a God, and I will yet praise him yeah. for the help of his countenance. Yeah. We don't have to be reckless in our praise. Yeah. We don't have to be reckless in our conduct. Why? Because we have no reason to be afraid because we're the people of God, but oh, yeah. as we're in this world, we'll abide by those scenes because we don't want to be reckless in our behavior, but even though I can't physically be in the house of God, Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. He says there is help in his countenance. Mm -hmm. In his countenance. The word countenance here, beloved, uh, in one sense of the word, it means, it means I. It means I. It means I. It means I. So, 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 so the scripture tells us that, that, the, that the eyes of the Lord are always upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their cries. Nice. The eyes of the Lord are always oh, upon the Lord, righteous, Lord, and his ears are open to their cries. Well, well, and, and, and if there be any doubt about God's eyes being locked in on you, the scripture gives us even further assurance. He says, the eyes of the Lord hey, search to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for those whose heart is set upon him, and I, 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 just, just in case he's not locked in, let me tell you, let me declare for myself, and, and, and you be, it would benefit you to do the same. Here I am, Lord. Here, here I am. My, my heart is thirsting for you. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I, 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 as the deer panteth after the water, after the water brooks, my heart is panting after you. Here I am, Lord. And the Bible says when he finds this heart, this thirsty heart, he locks in. And he will not take his eyes 
told for you. But now watch this, beloved, because here's the second part of this word, countenance. It means now to be before his face. See, because the only way the eyes can be locked on you is because you are in his face. I'm before his face. That's why the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Because when I find my way to his presence, when his eyes are locked in on me, I don't have to worry anymore because as he has locked in on me, he's looking for the opportunity to show up and show himself strong in my behalf. And even though I can't get to the house of God, I will yet praise him because I know he's locked in on me. Whether I be at the Walmart, on the highway, on the back alley, in the street, he's locked in on me. And he's waiting and allow him to come into my situation. Amen. Yes, if I have a talk with self. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So that he can work it out. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so beloved, it out, I want I want you to know today that that even this season, what is done for a lot of us is provide an opportunity for us to be real with self. Amen. Confront self. And in doing so, open the door for God to do the thing yeah. he's been longing to do. There's something about isolation, and meditation, and a loss of a sense of hope that will cause people to want to listen now where they were not ready to listen before. Listen today, beloved. Listen and hear in this season. Because, just because there is a hopeless situation. It does not mean that you are without hope. Amen. Because as we are the children of God, we are never 